Fruit Air fans, Jonathan here, and I have Ray from Divar. So we are super excited to ask you some questions and kind of learn a little bit more about the super popular fin, the Divar. Since the, the late 90s, okay. probably started in earnest in the, the 2000s, okay. in uh, my own garage really. Okay, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So what, like why, why fins? Why building fins? Um, I used to work commercially as a diver spending on an average in excess of a thousand hours every year and I'd go through in a good year probably four sets of fins, in wow. a bad year six or seven. Whew. Yeah, they just didn't just last. Just breaking them and wearing yeah, them out? Yeah, they just, just worn out. They just didn't last. Okay. okay. The, um, back then, carbon fins were sort of in their infancy and mm -hmm. they were expensive and didn't really last that long. Right, they just broke them all the yeah. time, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you're like, I can do this. This is pretty easy. Yeah, well, I thought so. The guys, <laughs> were, guys were starting to, to make composite fins okay. in Europe. I got my hands on a set and, and tried them, and of course they were a pretty well, just a flat sheet of composite material. Okay. No bend, no curves, no nothing. Yeah, very, very minimal of okay. anything. And um, they hurt my knees, they hurt my shins, and hurt my ankles. They worked great. Okay. They broke. But, okay. Yeah. So I thought I could do something better, and it, it began. Yeah, yeah. So out of the garage. So you start in the garage, and how do you know to make a fit? Like how the world? I just you... looked at it. Looked That's at the thin. Okay. And um, I sort of knew the process that fins were being manufactured with, i.e. In, in a press, and mm -hmm. so I made a little press up and, and started to play around with fiberglass and okay. resins and carbon fiber and other resins, okay. and soon realized that it wasn't working Okay. with um, thousands of dollars going to the local tip. <laughs> How many fins do you think you made before you came up with, like... This one, mate. It was two years of solid R and D, about just breaking fins over yeah, and over about again, twenty-five or? to thirty grams worth of material Ooh, to the rubbish tip. Man, all right. Yeah. Cool. Until I worked out there's a sort of a weight to the square meter of fabric ratio that sort of works. Okay. And then playing around with the different angles with the, the heel of the blade to, to make them less fatiguing on you. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So speaking of that, like with the angle, why? Why? Because it's like a 29 degree angle? Yeah, 29, 30 degree angle. Um, so why the steep angle? I just thought the um, it should be in line with your leg. So when you're laying on the, the surface of the water, mm -hmm. the, the blade is as close to parallel with the surface of the water as possible. So you're not missing out on that sort of degree of kick. Right. And if you point your toe straight towards the ground, no no toe points in line with the leg. It's yeah. always off a little bit of an angle. And just, unless you're a ballerina, right? Where yeah, unless you're a ballerina. <laughs> most divers yeah. are not ballerinas. And, so. Um, so my angle from my foot to my leg to make it straight was about 30 degrees and I thought, well, I'll try 30 degrees and try bigger, try less, but the 30 degree one Seems sort of worked, key worked really well, yeah. Nice. And then what about the, the rounded tip? Did you have any like change or design? Yeah, differences? originally they used to have a, a V cut. Okay. And, most fins um, do still, right? A little bit wider. Yeah, most fins do. Mm -hmm. And then um, I actually thought, well, yeah, humans aren't really that fast in the water. True. And most slow fish, they've got a big rounded tail, like a jewfish oh, or yeah. gropers have all got the big rounded tail. Okay. And um, I thought there had to be a reason for it. So I cut some fins with a rounded end. Mm -hmm. And um, some guys did a little uh, water flow study for turbulence and stuff. And a V shape is better for speed. Okay. And a rounded shape has less turbulence at slower speeds. That's tends to be that's why what we do. big fat fish have got like <laughs> rounded tails. Okay. Yeah. And that's essentially all we are, right? Yep. Kind of big fat fish yeah. in the water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah. So when they did that turbulence study, were they finding that the water spillage was coming off of each edge or down the middle like what what was the yeah it depends on the on the blades generally dive bars have never had like a large water rail mm -hmm. on, on the side of the fin mm -hmm. um, 
not really necessary, especially for, for spear fishing. If you're line diving or free diving and you, you haven't got good control of the ankles, that right. water rail does make a difference. Right. It sort of stabilizes the, the water, right? stabilizes the blade a bit, but it's it's minimal. The okay. amount of water that, that a blade loses to what it pushes is minimal. So, well, that's cool. I mean, a, a lot of people, I think, ask the, the question of that rounded tip, right? Like, why yeah. in the world? Because hardly anybody else does it. I mean, only a few companies have really adopted yep. that. And uh, it's cool to hear that there's, like, thought process behind. It's not yeah. just, oh, because it looks cool. Um, yeah, well, I just looked at nature and thought, well, you know, yeah. like, if you're a fast fish, you've got a V-tail. And if right. you're a slow fish, you've got a rounded tail. So there's got to be a purpose to it. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. And uh, going fast for us obviously doesn't, we have a lot of new listeners, a lot of uh, new guys starting out, but um, going faster obviously is way less efficient. So the faster that you move through the water, you might catch up to something, but you're gonna burn a lot more oxygen trying to get there. So moving that slow, kind of methodical pace yep. is definitely the, uh, the way to do it. Um, and then my last question that I've got for you is design, right? Of yep. the actual patterns themselves. Uh, I feel like, by far, you are the only manufacturer that I know of that comes up with the craziest designs. So how in the world do you come up with some of these just out of this world, crazy, awesome looking designs? Well, there was three things with Diver. One, the fins had to work. Right. So there's mechanics and stuff behind them and tech, which is the materials and resin systems involved. The other thing, you know, fins were always black yep. or grey or, yeah. you know, the odd red or blue. And when Dive R started, they were black, <laughs> red, blue, yep. Yep. green. You get a yellow there at one point. Yeah. yeah. And then there was this uh, sort of camo-y mm -hmm. material that was available in, in a phase. And I thought, well, instead of having a camo print, maybe I can put something, you know, nice. And I like a lot of art myself. Right. right. So I've got some friends that are artists, like... The artist that did this shark print here, the Naomi mm -hmm. Giddos, and um, it was to bring a bit of colour into diving, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just kind of a black, a black thing that just yeah. was kind of boring before. It made yeah. you uh, accomplish something, but now it's now a statement piece. Do you draw any of it yourself? Yeah, yeah I've done some myself. Okay. And um, like this, this power, power shell one, mm -hmm. which is a New Zealand abalone shell. The nice. um, few other designs I've did. A few people have wanted their own custom art, mm -hmm. and it may have been a really good design. You guys, of course, have got the yeah, we got free diver, super the, lucky with uh, the Dorado our... print. Yeah, mahi but prints, he, which worked out really well. It's actually one of the most popular of the diver nice. things, really. Nice, nice. The, um, some have come and gone, but all the designs are like you know, children. It's hard to get rid of them. <laughs> Fair enough. So as far as uh, the kind of new things that uh, Divar is doing, you've got like Sea yep. Sniper that you guys worked with a little bit, and now Rife, which is a huge name in the industry. So that's yep. cool and exciting. Any new things coming from Divar? Uh, we do do OME stuff uh, for other companies. That okay. Want, you know, sort of a, a leading fin in their um, various areas in the world. We, we supply fins into Northern Europe in Norway. Okay. So they're generally a, a slightly stiffer fin because they're carrying a lot more lead. Yeah. They dive a lot, a lot more colder. Water. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we do commercial stuff for, for dive crews, shorter fins for uh, pearl diving okay. off broom. Nice. Uh, abalone diving in Southern Australia. Okay. Generally, on the tech front, there's always something new and we spend a, a bit of money in R&D and trying different materials, different resin systems, always looking for that next uh, step. There's some fantastic materials to make fins out of. They're just out of the price range. Right. Yeah. For now. For now, for yeah. Now. So with the name Divar, right? I mean, this has been an iconic uh, name in the fin industry. How did Divar come up? What was the name? How did that come well, about? My first name is Ray. Okay, okay. So the R come from that. And, okay. Um, and you like to dive. <laughs> yeah, so it was, was, was going to be Dive Ray, and I thought, Diver, Diver, yeah. So Ray, you've obviously mentioned you've been doing this for 20 plus years. Yep. Um, what's it like sitting in your workshop making fins all day? I wish I had more time to use them. <laughs> okay. And actually go Fair diving enough. because the manufacturing side of it 
has uh, grown over the years. Now we've got a, a factory of two floors in it, uh, a couple of employees, and I'm still in there every day. Okay. And um, we're pushing out a lot of fins to cover yeah. the, the market globally around the world. Can you tell us how many fins you make a year? Yeah, last year was around 3,000. The year before that was two and a half. And wow. every year it just keeps, growing and growing and keeps growing. climbing. There's new markets emerging all the time around the world in, in countries that you just wouldn't believe. Interesting. Uh, we even export fins to China. Okay. Which I never thought we would be. But yeah, we do. yeah. How cool, though. Yeah. How neat. Awesome. Well, Ray, thank you so much for coming and uh, just telling us a little bit more about Divar, giving us the history and kind of some education on a, a super popular fin that I know that we personally uh, use in the shop and we sell the heck out of. Um, so it's been great. Um, if you guys did find value in this content, please be sure to subscribe or give this uh, video a thumbs up. Uh, otherwise, we will see you guys in the next one. video guys be sure to leave a comment on our channel let us know what you want to see next in the meantime you can check out all of our other awesome videos that we've already put up if you want to learn more about free diving and spear fishing particularly this one over here it's one of my favorite videos it's pretty awesome you should definitely check that one out um, and we will see you in the next one